Hello. Uh, my name is Matthias. I go by uh, Martin Tosh on GitHub and Twitter. And uh, today I'll be talking about JavaScript, BitTorn, and uh, Math Science. Uh, so I'll, at the end of this thing, I'll be presenting something that I've been working on since Tuesday. And uh, so hopefully it will work. But crossing our fingers. Um, all right. So let's get started. How, how many in here have heard about BitTorn before? <laughs> so like, usually when people think about BitTorrent, they kind of think about um, one thing, which is piracy. Um, and I think that's a bit sad, because like, BitTorrent is way, way, way more than this, right? It's, it's a completely, has completely different applications outside of piracy. Uh, so like, let's take a step back, let's try to talk about how BitTorrent works. So like, let's say you wanted to share something online, right? It could be a video of Matteo's talk, because that's like bound to go viral at some point. Uh, so normally what you would do is you, you take that video and you put that on the server, right? Uh, so you have like a big server, you just put the video on there and if you want to share it, you just have like a client, it just connects to the server and the server's like, hey, you get this video, it's fine. Cool. Right, so it's pretty nice, pretty simple. I think everybody has implemented that at some point. Uh, there's only like one problem. <laughs> because what happens when this becomes really, really viral and like a million people come and see this video? Well, we end up this, in this scenario where like you have a bunch of people, everybody's like, give me a piece of that video. I want to see that shit. And like servers trying to give it out to everybody, but it's not really possible, and there's only like one natural outcome. It's like the server goes boom, uh, and now like nobody's watching the video, and it's really hard to have a viral video if nobody is watching it. Uh, so, I mean, just looking at this drawing here, right? There's very obvious ways to 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 deal with this because we have all these clients still still there. So, like, what if we just had all of these clients just talk to each other, right? Uh, It'll probably look something like this, where you just have a bunch of peers. We call them peers now because they're both as clients in a server. And everybody has a bit of data and you're just like sharing it around. Like here's some data, here's some data, I got some data, it's cool. Uh, so like if one of these guys dies, it's fine because we still got a bunch of peers. It's cool. Uh, well, yeah, so that's peer to peer. But this introduces like other problems because what if someone what if like Matteo's arch enemy made a video and shared that but just called it Matteo's video, right? How do we trust that the video that we're getting is actually the correct one? So this is where the, the beauty of BitTorrent comes in because there's actually a really simple solution to this. Um, yeah, so like, what if we have this evil peer? Uh, so what we do is we just take the video and we just cut it up into like equally sized pieces. So this could be like half a meg, 10 meg, depending on how big the file is. And you just take a hash of each of these, like that could be an MD5. So now we have like a big list of hashes, right? Uh, and assuming I have this list of hashes, I can just get one of these pieces from anybody and to verify that this is the correct one, that actually this was the one that Matteo shared in the beginning. I just hash it again, this piece, and I look at my list and see, oh, that matches. Cool, it's the right one. Um, so what we do is we just take this list of hashes, right, because that's pretty small, and we just put that on a trusted server. And actually, this list of hashes is what we usually call the torrent file. It's basically just a list of hashes. So you just trust the torrent file, and by trusting the torrent file, you basically end up trusting the entire uh, content. So it's actually a really, really, really simple solution to this problem, right? Uh, but we still have a bootstrapping issue here because how do we start this network? How do we bootstrap this network? Because in the beginning, that's only me. I'm a peer. I need to talk to some other peers to get this data. Uh, so how do we like make a system where peers can find each other? Well, actually, we can introduce something called uh, distributed hash table. Has anybody heard of a distributed hash table before? All right, it's like smart people in the crowd here. Uh, so what is a distributed hash table? It's basically just a table. Uh, that's also a hash table, and it's distributed. <laughs> uh, yeah. 
So what we do is we just, like, I have a torrent file, right? And I have an IP and a port. And let's assume that someone can reach me on this IP and a port. So what I do is I just hash my torrent file again. Like, so I have the, the torrent file. It's the list of hashes. I just hash those hashes again. That gives me, like, a small key. And I just put this into the table, right? So if somebody else has the same torrent file, he wants to find someone who shares this, he just goes to the table and say, can you give me some uh, uh, values for this key? And the table will be like, yeah, sure, here's, here's a value. It doesn't really matter if it gives us all the values, it just needs to give us some of the values, right? Because I don't need to be connected to every peer in the world that's sharing this file, I just need to be connected to some of them. So it's like a perfect example of a database also that's like eventual consistent, and it's, it's really good that it's eventual consistent because you don't want to uh, have that entire thing there, right? So this DHT, the distributed hash table that's actually back in GitTorn, is it's, it's fucking huge. It's like, it's probably one of the biggest deployed databases in the world. At any time, someone did a study of this, at any time, this database has 10 million nodes in it, and on, on average. I imagine that, imagine having like a MySQL database where you have like 10 million nodes. Uh, that's kind of like unthinkable. So that's the kind of scale. And that means that in order to take down something like BitTorrent on a global scale, you would need to knock on 10 million doors. You'd be like, could you please turn your computer off? And you need to all do it at the same time, please. Uh, so it's like, it's, it's so big that it's like uh, unkillable. Yeah, so like that's basically how BitTorrent works on a, on a really low level. You basically just have the torrent file, you share that, the torrent file kind of verifies that the data you get from everybody is correct and you just get the data from random peers. Use the DHT to find peers. Actually, really, really simple, right? At least I think that. Uh, it's like a really basic protocol. So, the cool thing about this is that we can actually use this to distribute a lot of data. And BitTorrent is already doing that. I think everybody knows that. Who has ever tried BitTorrent? Uh, so, that, that, there's a huge amount of data out there, and it's really easy to sh share new data. Uh, the problem is, we kind of want to be able to fetch all this data instantly. We don't want to wait for like, the entire thing to download. I mean, if we're downloading like a gigabyte. We're on a shitty connection. It can take a while. We just want to be able to stream it, right? So how can we do? It? How can we make BitTorrent stream? Uh, so I worked on this a bit, and I have an algorithm that I like to show. Uh, so actually, when you think about streaming, we have this file, right? It's based on pieces. So streaming just means that we just fetch the right piece at the right time. So like, if we want to get, the, if, we, if we're really interested in the first part of the file, that's what we want to stream. We just fetch the first piece. And then the next piece, and then the third piece, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So actually, like, it's actually pretty simple on a very high level. So a really easy way of doing this would just implement what I just said. Like, you have us or me. We want to get piece five. We just talk to a peer. We'd be like, "Dude, can you send me? A, can you send us piece five? And then after that, we fetch piece six. Right? Well, actually, this is a bit too simple because it has a really, really big problem. Because I mean, what if this guy turns out to be a, a pain in the ass? Uh, what if he's just, maybe he's just really slow, has a really slow uplink or something, right? So what happens is now we're not really getting the piece because we're getting it really, really slowly. And we're getting, when you're getting something really, really slowly, you're not really streaming. Um, so, trivial solution, right? Just introduce two peers. Uh, so let's say we have all our peers, and we just like uh, <coughs> run a heuristic on them once in a while, figure out which peer is fast, I mean, which peer have we downloaded from before, and favorize those peers, and just, if we want to get a really, really critical piece, like piece five, because that's the first piece, we just fetch that from multiple peers, right? So we can still have the same problem as before, where this peer becomes really, really slow, but that's fine, because we can just detect that, because we're still getting data from this guy here. So we just detect that, and like swap him out, with another peer, right? So, really, really simple. Uh, so this gives us like a concurrent fetch of really, really critical pieces. And the cool thing is, not that many, like if you live in a country where you have OK internet, you're usually going to download faster than you need it. Like, if you take something like a movie these days, you just need like a 5 to 10 megabit, up, megabit uplink. And like, at least in the Nordics, I'm from Kupmin, uh, people have faster internet than that these days, so you like build up a buffer pretty quickly. Um, so, like, we're fetching too much data, but it doesn't really matter because we're just fetching it in the beginning. All right, 
So, fun part. Um, so I implemented this thing. It's in a Node module. I don't know. It's called this is Node. Huh? It's called uh, Torn Stream. And this is actually just a really, really low-level implementation of this. It just allows you to like, require a torn stream. You have a torn file somewhere. You just pass that in, and you get this thing back. I call an engine, because I always wanted to name something an engine, because it sounds really cool. And what you can do on that thing is you can just, like, you can just create a restream. right? So this stream is just a regular node stream. And you can even do stuff like random access, where you say, like, start from this byte into this byte. And what will happen is, on a lower level, like it will just figure out that it just needs to fetch this piece, this piece, and this piece. So like, it's still doing the piece algorithm, but it just gives us a nice, nice node abstraction. So the cool thing about streams is that most cool modules in, on NPM works with streams, so we can like kind of plug it turned into anything, uh, which is like my next topic. <laughs> so I mean, I've done this demo before, but like it's really, it's really good way of just explaining, of understanding why this is really useful, right? So what if we could take something like video, because everybody understands video, and just start streaming that using peer to peer I mean, there's no reason we should just have a big server just has like a lot of video files, and when we could just distribute these peer to peer right? It gives us all these nice properties that we talked in the beginning. Basically, that the TV stream won't break down if like all of Hungary is watching it at the same time. Um, so I implemented this, it's called Peerflix. Um, and it's actually just a small wrapper around torrent stream that takes a torrent and pipes it into the OC. Uh, so I'm gonna try to demo this. So like 20 minutes ago, uh, I was talking to Gurgi and I was like, yeah, how's the internet here? And he's like, yeah, it's good. But it turns out this internet blocks like BitTorrent. <laughs> so, Gergay and uh, Peter were so kind of lending me like a bunch of mobile phones. So what we're going to try is we're going to try to like stream torrent using mobile internet. So it's going to be fun. Okay. Let's open your office. So each of these phones has like limited bandwidth, so we might end up testing like the fault tolerance of this thing also. So let's see. <coughs> You have no Wi-Fi. Yes, yes, yeah, I'm like using the cable. Ah, nice. Uh, all right, all right. So we got internet. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so like, actually, a little bit. I found a movie beforehand uh, that's on BitTorrent. It's called uh, The Pirate Bay Away from Keyboard. It's a documentary about the Pirate Bay. Um, so what we can do here? Oh, I should probably make this way here. <laughs> Alright. People can see this, right? Alright. So it's as simple as just calling PFLX, telling it to spoof VLC by adding the dash V and then just passing a torrent file. So if I execute this, it will like hopefully oh, yeah. So actually the video booted now because this internet is quite good. So we're actually streaming the video here now. Uh, from all these peers that you see here. And since we can do random access, I can even do stuff like skim the video, and it'll just like fetch another piece of the video, right? So we're actually streaming this in live. Uh, I haven't fetched any of this, and like it works on any video. So I think that's kind of cool. All right. Like we can build a network which can just kind of like raise the quality of the market watch, which is like really, really cool. But that's nice time. So like streaming video is easy. People have done it before. I've done it before. It's like a really good use case, right? But since we just deal with low-level no streams, we can actually do way more fun stuff. So 
the thought about Docker. <laughs> um, so, how many people in there have heard about Docker? All right, nice, 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 nice. All right. So, I recently started to do a lot of stuff with Docker uh, because I think it has a lot of promise and it has a lot of shit, but that's another talk. So, like, for those who don't know it, and this is completely wrong, but I'm actually going to say it anyway. Docker is kind of like a lightweight VM, like it's just your virtual machine uh, that's based on Linux uh, that you can uh, that you can run. Like these images, these uh, uh, VMs that you build are based on images, right? So have, have anybody tried to actually run Docker? <laughs> All right. Have anybody tried to use the Docker registry? All right. So I tried to use the Docker registry, and I'm based in Europe, and I think that registry is based in the US because it's like a pain in the ass. It's the most slow thing in the world. Uh, so the problem is that like these images that you brew, these VM images, are actually quite large because it, takes, it contains an entire Linux distribution. So, like for example, I made a simple Hello World node app, and I exported it using Docker, and it actually ends up being more than 600 megabytes um, because like this thing contains node, uh, like stuff to run node, and the entire Ubuntu distribution. Um, so like it's a lot of shit. Which is why when you fetch it the first time, it takes quite a long time, and like when you when you edit something, push it back, it takes like even longer because my hotlink is upload is really really slow. Right. So how can we fix this? Well, I just talked about BitTorrent, right? The images are actually read-only, and if there's one use case that's really really good for BitTorrent, it's basically broad, large read-only data. So what if we could build something where we could just take these Docker images and download them using BitTorrent? Right. So I started thinking about this, and so like, that's actually that's really trivial to do, but that's not fun. So what if instead, instead of like just downloading again, we could just not download them, but just mount a file system that knew where this like image was, right? So now, we, like, imagine if we could have a file system that just references all the files in the Docker image. And what if we could just mount this instantly, kind of like we did with the video, right? What if we could just have a file system that just has a, an image that's not even on our computer, and it would just like fucking work? Um, <laughs> so, like, what if we took Docker, we took BitTorrent, and we took something called Fuse, which is like something that allows us to build a user space file system, that basically allows us to implement the file system in JavaScript. If we combine all these two, uh, three things, we would get something that would be like <laughs> crazy, right? So, I started this project Tuesday. It's called Tar Docker. I released it yesterday uh, during the night. So, <laughs> and we got to test it using uh, a free internet. Uh, so, all right. All right. So, what I'll do here is here's a terminal. And I'm going to SSH into a server I have. So, this server. This server is uh, based in uh, somewhere, some digital ocean. I think it's in uh, London. It doesn't matter. It's not here, right? This is not my computer. <coughs> this is not my computer. Right? Everybody is getting that? Yeah. It's very important. <laughs> <laughs> so, here on this machine, I have a Docker image that I built uh, like 20 minutes ago. It's called test image. So, here I'm actually running this Docker image. It's just like a basic uh, Ubuntu that has uh, no, and it has like curl and stuff, right? So it's like basic bare bone uh, Ubuntu distribution. So what I can do now is I, I already installed uh, torrent Docker on this thing, so I can call create, and I can just pass uh, my image thing. All right. So what's happening now is torrent Docker is telling the Docker daemon that's running on my machine. Please take this image and dump it out uh, to a tarball. And like this tarball is huge, so it's going to take like, uh, let's give it 10 seconds. Um, so, like, it tells Docker to go to that image, take the entire file system, and make a, a single tarball that contains all of this file system, right? Uh, so, now I did that. So, what we're doing now is we're running through this tarball, because like, that's just one big file, and figuring out what, what are all these individual files that are in this tarball. And we're actually taking all the, all this information and putting it into LabelDB. Has anybody heard about LabelDB? I think Dominic has. Um, 
So like LabelDB is just a really simple embedded database. So it's just a small, a small database that contains like index for this file. So what we end up getting is two files. I can find my mouse, that's fine. The image and the database, that's the index, right? So the cool thing is that the image is actually really small, it's like one megabyte. And the image is like 600, 540 megabytes. It also made something for the torrent, test image torrent. So what I can do now is I can seed this torrent on this remote machine. So now seeding. I can now go to my local machine. I am here. But this is running on my machine. I can call, I can, uh, oh, I need to fetch this torrent first. So I need to I need to download this torrent on my machine. Just do that. <laughs> Alright, so I'm seeing it again. So now over here I downloaded just a torrent file for, for this image, right? So I can call torrent uh, docker boot because I want to boot this torrent. I'm just going to pass it like my container, container name. So now, this is actually trying to boot this Docker file, uh, this Docker image. And down here, you see what's happening like every file that's being accessed by the file system. So that's being fetched live in the current. So, like, in a couple of seconds, it will fetch like bash because it needs to boot bash in order to boot the VM. So, actually, now it booted, right? We just booted 600 megabytes. A virtual machine in like five seconds using a 3G internet connection. Uh, and like it's still downloading, right? And this is like fully featured. I can call like LL and get like my VM. It's just fetching files on demand. I can call what version of Node do we have here. So now it's actually fetching Node down here. In the bottom. Uh, and like all the dependencies on Node, like Node, it depends on the PM thing, whatever. Oh, I got Node now here, right? <laughs> I can run like boot node. That's cool. Fully featured node. I can even see it on like this thing is on I can even like do one match shit. I can like let's scroll through. Yeah, I need to fetch scroll now. But like I only need to fetch it once because it's being synced. And in, in the background things are being synced anyway. Uh, hopefully. Yeah, so boom. Boot go right. I can do it again. Fast. Uh, so, I mean, like, imagine the possibilities with this thing. What if somebody built, like, a torrent app store where you just put all the images on BitTorrent? Then we could just have in the entire, like, Docker cloud on BitTorrent. We could just boot anything we wanted in, like, five seconds. And, like, most images share the same data because most images, like, require a bash, very basic uh, dis uh, uh, Ubuntu distribution. But we can get like free deduplication for free because like if you just take out a way of letting the torrent know that we share this shit, we could like boot it in one second instead of ten seconds. So that's like future work. Uh, so we did that. It works. Yay! It basically just works by implementing a union file system that has a read-only path that's based on BitTorrent and a writable path that's based on your local file system. When you read something. You just say, oh, is this file in your local file system? Just read it from there. Otherwise, go to the BitTorrent. Is the file in BitTorrent? Read it from there. Otherwise, we don't have the file. When we write something, we just say, is the file in the local file system? Cool. Just write it to there. Well, otherwise, this is on BitTorrent. We just copy it from BitTorrent to our local file system, and then we write it to our local file system. Um, so this is basically what we call a copy and write. This is like the perfect use case of copy and write, because we have a huge part of our file system that's Readable, uh, read only, and we probably only edit like only write a very small part of it. Like usually, when you run a container, you don't really do that many edits. Um, so it's like a good use case. Uh, and that's it. <laughs>